All right, in this video, we're going to look at um, getting the camera operable. And you might think, ooh, the camera, that sounds like something that's going to be difficult to do. Um, what's going on behind the scenes is a little complex, okay? But uh, with App Inventor, things have been have been made quite a bit easier. I mean, even with Python, things are things are pretty easy um, compared to what's really going on in that lower, lower level. It's kind of the idea of, of abstraction that um, some people may have heard of. Uh, the idea is that where we interact with it is a pretty on a, on a high level. We don't have to worry, I mean, really, it, it all comes down to zeros and ones. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about actually talking to the processor, allocating memory, doing all these things that um, at the very basic level has to be done. Uh, and so that's why it's abstract, just like when you you drive a car, you know, you put on the press on the gas pedal, um, which is really a, a misnomer because it's really the air pedal. It, it, it influences how much air is going into the car, but you don't worry about that going into the engine. And then the more air, the more gas it puts in and so on. You don't worry about that. Okay. You don't worry that when you press the brake, there's a brake booster and that's connected and then the hydraulics and there's a squeezing of discs or, um, yeah, it's sort of a, a brake on a disc. Okay. You don't worry about all that. You just know that if you press the brake pedal, hopefully the car stops and that's abstraction. We don't know exactly what's going on in between. You might want to figure it out, but in reality, we don't need to care about it. Okay. At our, what, at our level of, of working, we don't have to worry about that. Somebody does, okay, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and that's where, um, you know, technology has become a bit of a, a scary thing in the sense that we sometimes don't really know what's going on in the background because we've, we've built, you know, we sort of rely on all these systems that maybe we don't understand and maybe few people understand. And that's, that can be a bit of an issue. But anyways, we're not going to worry about that. I can deal with that in philosophy. Um, so what we're going to do is, is take a picture. And so if you remember from before, we had a button called the uh, take a picture and we had the component, um, the, the camera component. So what we want to do is in the blocks, first thing we want to do is activate the picture. Okay. So when you take the picture, so where's the camera button here? So that's the camera itself, our camera button. Okay. So when the camera button is clicked, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to take a picture. And so if you notice down here, there was the camera. So we click on that. There's not much here. We want to take a picture. Now I would think, yeah, we just have that camera one there. Um, I think it would rely on whatever camera you've set. Most phones have a front and rear facing camera. I would assume it goes with whatever the default on the camera is. Um, all right. So what it's going to do is take a picture. Okay, great. It takes a picture. You could run this now and it would take a picture. It's not going to do anything. Okay. And so what we need it to do is actually activate it and, or use it, use that picture that we've taken. So there's actually something called a callback function here and don't have to worry too much about it, but it automatically gets called when you do the take a picture. Okay. So when the camera one after picture, so it knows that a picture has been taken. What do you want to do after? And it puts into memory a, um, a parameter called image that links to the picture that's been saved on your camera. Okay. And so what do we want to do? Well, we want to change the background. Okay. We don't want to have my poor cat on the picture anymore to draw pictures. You want to be able to take a picture of your friend and then draw funny mustaches on them because that's what we want to do. So in order to do that, uh, we simply grab the canvas. Okay. Because we're going to change the canvas and we come down and we want to set the property and we have to find something with the image there. So set the canvas one background image to something. Okay. And what do we want to set it to? Again, Jeopardy music is playing. Well, it should be pretty obvious, I hope to you now that what we want to do is take this image. We want to grab the image that we took the picture of and we just throw it on there. Okay. So just to re, you know, sort of go through this again, when 
you click the button, okay, camera button, it will take a picture. Perfect. So it grabs the camera, what's called the API, the uh, application programming interface of the camera. Again, very high level here. We don't have to worry about how the picture is being taken and so on. It just works. And then um, it will, once that picture is taken, so once it's finished this uh, this procedure, then it will run this one, okay, this after picture procedure, and it will set the canvas to our background image, which is our, or set the canvas's background image to whatever image we took here, okay, and that's brought in as the parameter. All right, so that should get you going to be able to update your picture, so try that. Now again, if you're using the emulator, unfortunately, this one won't work for you. The last thing that we'll do is uh, change up that uh, big and small button um, and change it to a slider like I mentioned before. It just makes it a bit more, you know, user friendly. Um, just having two sizes is kind of kind of limiting. So what we're going to end up doing is really getting rid of this and changing it for a slider. So let's first go to our blocks because that's where, or sorry, designer, where we need to get rid of them. So we'll actually get rid of these two here. So you can delete and it'll give you a warning, yes, delete. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is when you go back to the blocks, um, those have gone, okay? So you do uh, have to be careful when you delete them because if you do accidentally delete them, you might end up with <laughs> you know, part of your code gone. I think it does have a previous version saving capacity, but just, just be careful there. Okay, anyways, let's go back to our designer. And we'll still put it in here, um, but there is a slider. So I think under the user interface, there is a slider, not a spinner, but a slider. So let's just put that in and we want that in here as well. Hopefully we can get it in there. Good. Okay. So there's our slider and uh, we want a little bit of a text label just to let people know that this is for dot size changing. And so hopefully I can get it in there. Good. Okay. So for that text, size. Um, I will call it a uh, dot size, I guess. You can't have too much text in there. Okay, so dot size. Um, and that should be okay, I think. Then we'll go to our slider. Now there's a few things here. I don't know why it's orange. Let's just set that to black. Uh, the right color is gray. I guess that's okay. You can change those up, obviously. Now right here is a very important thing. The max, the min, and um, the thumb position, which I believe is the default, okay? Uh, so the max value, 50, I think would be too big. So I can set that to 10. Uh, we might as well get it right to go to zero. Uh, you could do one maybe. And the thumb position, let's just put that in the middle, okay? And so that I think is the, the default size. And that's really all we have to do. Obviously you can play around with these and see what happens. Now what I wanna do is grow to the blocks, okay? And uh, we just need to, f oops, maybe before I do that, well, I, pff, slider one, that's okay. I was just gonna say change the name of it, but we've only got one slider here. So click on the slider and you can see there's a bunch of different things. But our, our basic you know, thing that we wanna be able to do is just when this happens. So when the user changes the position, okay, then something's, you know, obviously the, the, the program should do something. Well, what's it gonna do? Well, it's simply gonna change the, uh, the position of our, our dot size one, okay? And so under variables, uh, we're gonna set, right? So do, what is it gonna do? It's gonna set the global dot size, okay, and what's it going to set it to? Well, it's going to set it to whatever we've put in our thumb position. I don't know why they've called it thumb position, but they have. Um, I don't usually use my thumb to interact, but I guess I guess you could. Okay, so based on wherever you've placed your thumb, okay, on that slider, then it's going to set that global dot size. And so it will scale it from zero to 20 with 10 in the middle and then sort of increment it, you know, up or down as you, as you move your, move your um, uh, slider there. And that's it. Okay. So you should be able to go in and test that and you've got a functioning app. So as you can see, there's not that much code here. Um, if I, you know, I've got this one sort of 
be smaller but you know for a pretty fun little app i mean it's no what's that instagram where when where it puts the dog face or whatever on you and it's nothing like that but it has um you know sort of that that the foundations that that app is based on right here okay and that's really the power of mit app inventor is that very easily uh, you can create a pretty powerful app without without too much code all right so there'll be a chance for you to modify it improve it uh, and but that's it for for the r paint pot